today we are going to see the first chapter of eighth standard that is crop production and management now we know that our india is a agricultural country because in india in most of the region in most of the places we are taking growing of crops we are producing many things in agriculture now what is mean by agriculture in this chapter we are going to learn what is mean by crop what is mean by agriculture what are the different steps we are using during crop production what is mean by manures and what is mean by fertilizers as well as we'll see the meaning of animal husbandry what is mean by agriculture we'll see now till 10000 bc people were nomadic nomadic means they are wandering here and there for their basic needs they were wandering in groups from place to place in search of food and shelter they ate raw fruits and vegetables and started hunting for animals for food later they could cultivate land and produce rice wheat and other food crops thus was born agriculture initially till 10000 bc people wandering here and there for their basic needs to fulfill their basic need as food shelter like that but after some time some people started to grow the wheat rice in land and from that started agriculture and for that we are using the word agriculture next what is crop when plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale it is called a crop see if we are growing only one plant then that is not a crop but if similar kinds of many plants we are growing at one place then that is known as a crop when plant of the same kind for example we are growing rice we are growing rice in one area in one bigger area and the number of those plants are many on large amount then we are saying that is a crop for example crop of wheat means that all the plants grown in a field are that of wheat we are taking crops of wheat rice there are many types of crops we are taking in india you already know that crops are different types like cereals vegetables fruits this can be classified on the basis of season in which they grow on the basis of season means in which season we are growing which plant there are two types of plants despite this university two broad cropping patterns can be identified these are kharif crops and rabi crops in detail we'll see what is mean by kharif crops kharif crops the crops which are sown in the rainy season are called kharif crops and the rainy season in india is generally from june to september paddy maize soybean groundnut cotton etc are kharif crops see the crops which we are growing in rainy season those all the type of crops are known as kharif crops and in india rainy season started from june and it ends in september that's why in this time the crops which we are taking those are known as kharif crops and the examples of kharif crops are this paddy maize soybean groundnut cotton etc these all are the examples of kharif crops now next is the rabi crops next is rabi crops the crops grown in the winter season are called rabi crops their time period is generally from october to march the crops which we are taking in winter season those all types of crops are known as rabi crops and that we are taking in october to march before growing crops we need to do some basic practices now which are those basic practices of crop production we'll see preparation of soil is the first step second sowing third is the adding manures and fertilizers fourth is irrigation fifth protecting from weeds sixth harvesting and seventh step that is a storage we'll see one by one each step in detail the preparation of soil the preparation of soil is the first step before growing a crop before growing any crop we need to prepare a soil 
need to prepare soil means what we are doing one of the most important task in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it we are loosening the soil why we are loosening soil to reach the oxygen inside that soil particle so that it can help to grow the crops properly the loosened soil helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil as well as the loosened soil helps to grow the earthworm as well as microbes which are present in the soil and these organisms are friends of farmers since they further turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it we are saying earthworms are the friends of farmers why because these earthworms are help to loosen the soil and that's why we are saying these are the friends of farmers the process of loosening and turning of the soil is called a tilling or plugging the process in which we are loosening the soil or turning of the soil then that process is known as tilling or plugging and the instrument which we are using to loosen the soil that is known as plug and this is a plug the instrument which we are using to tilling the soil or to loosening the soil is a plug and thus plugs are made of wood or iron if the soil is very dry it may need to watering before plugging see this plug we are using to loosen the soil sometimes that soil is very dry we need to watering so that it will make the soil soft and it is easy to loosen that's why before loosening soil we need to watering that dry soil and the plug field may have a big pieces of soil called crumbs it is necessary to break these crumbs with a plant now when we are loosening the soil in that some bigger size soil particles are there some bigger pieces of soils are there and those are nothing but the crumbs it is necessary to break those crumbs with the help of this plant so that it will help to loosen the soil before sowing the seeds it is necessary to break soil to the size of grains to get better yield this is done with the help of various tools and the main tool used for this purpose are plug hoe and cultivator before growing plants or before sowing seed we need to prepare the soil and preparing soil means what we are doing we are loosening the soil with the help of some instrument by using some tools and those tools are nothing but plug hoe and cultivator with the help of these tools we are loosen the soil before sowing the seed this is a plug which we are using to tilling or to loosening the soil plug is being used since ancient times for tilling the soil adding fertilizers to the crop removing the weeds and scraping of soil etc this plug we are using for many purposes like that removing the weeds also for scraping the soil also adding the fertilizers to the crop next tool that is a hoe which is shown in this figure it is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil it has a long rod of wood or iron see here shown in the picture it is has a long rod of wood and broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its ends and works like a blade it is pulled by animals this is a wooden rod and this is a metal or iron plate which we are using like a plate and we are using with the help of animals this as well as used by farmers for loosening the soil next tool that is a cultivator nowadays plugging is done by tractor driven by cultivator and the use of cultivator saves labor and time because of the advanced technology nowadays we are using this cultivator connecting to the tractor and with the help of this cultivator we are able to save more labor energy as well as time in less time we are able to prepare more soil as compared to the labor next step in crop production that is a sowing after soil preparation 
Sowing is the most important part of crop production. Before sowing, good quality seeds are selected. Good quality seeds are clean and healthy seeds of a good variety. Farmers prefer to use seeds which give a high yield. Before sowing, one of the important tasks is to know about the tools used for sowing seeds. Now see, before sowing seed, we need to collect the good quality seeds so that the crops which we are growing will get in better quality. Now, how to find out this good seeds? We'll see. We need to do one activity to find out the good quality seeds. What we are doing? Take a beaker and fill half of it with water. Put a handful of wheat seeds and stir well. Wait for some time. Now in this beaker we are taking water half filled beaker and inside that we are adding some grains of wheat. After that we observe like this that some seeds are floating, some are settled down at the bottom and some are floating as well as settled down at the bottom. Now which seeds are better? See why would they be lighter? Damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter. Therefore, they float on water. The seeds which are not good in condition, those are hollow from inside and that's why they are lighter and that's why they float on the water. But the seeds which are good from inside, they are heavier and they sink down the bottom. That's why the seeds which are settled down at the bottom, those seeds we are taking as a good seeds for our crop production. Next, that is a traditional tool. The tool used traditionally for sowing seed is shaped like a funnel. The seeds are filled into the funnel, passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends. These ends pass into the soil and place seeds there. See, in this figure shown that this is a funnel. In this funnel, we are adding the seeds and this funnel is connect to the long tube which tube enters into the deep in soil so that the seed which we are entering into this funnel directly enters deep into the soil with the help of this we are sowing the seed in deep down the soil nowadays we are using seed drill to sow the seed Seed drill, nowadays the seed drill is used for sowing with the help of tractor and this tool sows the seed uniformly at proper distances and depths. It ensures that seeds get covered by the soil. After sowing, this prevents damage caused by birds. Sowing by using a seed drill saves time and labor. See in this picture shown that seed drill. With the help of this seed drill, we are able to sow the seeds uniformly at proper distances and depths. This seed drill helps the labor's energy as well as time. Now next step in crop production that is adding manures and fertilizers after sowing seed. The substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called soil manures and fertilizers. See, for our healthy growth, we are taking proteins, other proper nutrients, same like that, to grow the crops in proper way. To, to get healthy crops, we are adding some external substances to those crops and those are nothing but the manuals and fertilizers. Supplies minerals, nutrients to the crop. These nutrients are essential for the growth of the plants. Continuous growing of crops make the soil poorer in certain nutrients. Now see, because of continuous growing of crops, that soil nutrients are reduced and that's why we are adding external nutrients to that soil so that that crop will grow healthy. Adding manures and fertilizers in that therefore farmers have to add manures to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients. And this process is called manuring. Improper or insufficient manuring results in wheat plant. Replenishing the soil by adding manures is known as manuring. 
What are the fertilizers? See, fertilizers are chemical substances which are rich in a particular nutrient. Fertilizers are produced in factories and the use of fertilizers has helped farmers to get better yield of crops such as wheat, paddy and maize. For getting the better crop, we are using fertilizers which are the chemicals. But excessive use of fertilizers has made the soil less fertile. Fertilizers have also become a source of water pollution. These fertilizers are chemical that's why if we are using those fertilizers again and again in that soil, it will reduce its fertility as well as these fertilizers pollute the water also. Now what are the advantages of manures? See, the organic manure is considered better than fertilizers. This is because they are considered as manures are better than fertilizers. Why we are saying manures are better than fertilizers? See, it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil. It makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases becomes easy. These manures are enhance the holding capacity, water holding capacity of the soil. And it makes the soil porous so that the gases exchange can be easily possible and it will help to grow the crop properly. It increases the number of friendly microbes. It improves the texture of the soil. It increases the number of friendly microbes because these are not harmful chemicals. That's why it helps to grow the microbes and it, it improves the texture of the soil because these manures are natural. Just we learn about the manures and fertilizers. What is the difference between manures and fertilizers? We will see. Here fertilizer is an inorganic salt. Manure is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung, human waste and plant residues. Second point that is a fertilizer is prepared in factories. Manure can be prepared in the fields. Third, a fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil. Manure provides a lot of humus to the soil. Fertilizers are very rich in plants, nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Manure is relatively less rich in plant nutrients. Now what is mean by humus? Humus means a dead, decaying part of the plants and the animal waste. Next, that is a irrigation. The supply of water to crops at different intervals is called irrigation. The time and the frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop, soil to soil and season to season. See, the supply of water to crop is known as a irrigation. Now, this supply of water depends on the type of crop as well as the season as well as the type of soil. Means how much water is required to provide that crops. This depends on all these things. What are the sources of irrigation? See here, the sources of irrigation are wells, tube wells, ponds, lakes, river, dams and canals. These all are the sources of irrigation. Next we will see the traditional method of irrigation. The water available in wells, lakes and canals is lifted up by different methods. See here like shown in this picture, we are using to lift the water this instrument and with the help of this we are lifting the water from that well. For taking it to the fields, cattle or human labor is used in this method. So these methods are cheaper but less efficient and the various traditional ways are moat and chain pump. Moat and chain pump these are the traditional methods which use for irrigation. Some other traditional methods for irrigation we will see. That is pumps are commonly used for lifting water, diesel, biogas, electricity and solar energy is used to run these pumps. Now to run these pumps we are using solar energy as well as electricity and diesel. With the help of these pumps we are able to lift the water from the well and it will help for irrigation. What are the modern methods of irrigation? See first is the sprinkler system. 
this system is more useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available when land is uneven and the sufficient water is not available that time this method is very useful because that water directly reaches to the crop second modern method for irrigation that is a drip system in this system the water falls drop by drop just at the position of the roots so it is called drip system it is the base technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees in this system see drop by drop water reaches to the root of plant so, so that wastage of water also prevent and that's why this is the best technique for irrigation it is the best technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees next step in the crop production that is weeds and weeding what is mean by weeds and what is mean by weeding weeds in a field many other undesirable plants may grow naturally along with the crops and these undesirable plants are called weeds when we are growing crops with that some undesirable unwanted plants also grow with that crops and those unwanted plants are known as weeds and which are prevent to proper growth of crops which we want next what is mean by weeding see the removal of weeds is called a weeding to remove those unwanted plants are known as weeding weeding is a necessary since weeds compete with the crop plants for water nutrients space and light see when these weeds are growing with the crop whatever water or nutrients or sunlight is coming that takes or that compete with the crops which we are taking in the land and that's why whatever water nutrients sunlight is provided to the crop that takes by that weeds only and that's why the sufficient amount of these things not getting to the crops so that we need to remove those weeds and after that we'll get the proper nutrients water sunlight to the crops which we are growing Thus, they affect the growth of the crop, and tilling before sowing of crops helps in uprooting and killing of the weeds, which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil. How to protect the crops from weeds? See, weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called weedicide. To control the growth of weeds, we are using sometimes some chemicals, and those are nothing but the weedicides. like 24d these are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds and they do not damage the crops the weedicides are diluted with water to the extent required and sprayed in the fields with a sprayer these weedicides are not harmful for the crops we are diluting with the help of water or by adding water into that and we are applying this weedicide with the help of sprayer on those crops or which will help to kill those weeds next step in crop production that is harvesting harvesting of a crop is an important task the cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting in harvesting crops are pulled out or cut closest to the ground it usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crops to mature after maturing the crops when we are cutting those that is nothing but the harvesting harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle or by a machine called harvester harvesting we are able to do by both the met methods manually as well as by using instrument tools machine and that machine is known as a harvester in the harvested crop the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff this process is called harvesting some time we are doing by using combine combine is also a one tool which we are using to harvest the seeds farmers with small holding of land do the separation of grain and chaff by winnow now see here with the help of this combine we are able to do the winnowing as well as harvesting that's why that instrument is known as combine 
with the help of combine we are able to do both winnowing as well as harvest combine is one tool which is used for harvesting after harvesting storage is a very important part in the crop production storage of produce is an important task if the crop grains are to be kept for a longer time they should be safe from moisture insect rats and microorganism see we are produce a lot of crops on large amount but if we are not stored those properly then it will the wastage of time money as well as our energy that's why we need to store these grains or crops in proper way to prevent those from moisture insect rats and microorganisms see here the fresh crop has more moisture if freshly harvested grains are stored without drying they may get spoilt or attacked by organism losing their germination capacity see if seeds are wet or newly produced then it is having a more water content or they are having a more water level inside that seed that's why before storing seeds we dried those seeds so that to reduce that water content from that seed and that's why microorganisms are easily not attached to those dried seeds if water is present in that seed then microorganisms are easily attached on those farmers store grains in jute bags or metallic bins however large scale storage of grains is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at home we know that our mother is drying those seeds before storing as well as sometimes have you observed that the neem leaves we are using to store these grains why we are using this neem leaves because it prevent to grow some microorganisms for storing large quantities of grain in big godown specific chemical treatment are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms in bigger godowns like this they are using some chemicals to prevent from microorganism as well as some pests storage is the last point in the crop production next we'll see the animal husbandry fish is good for health we get cod liver oil from fish which is rich in vitamin d animals reared at home or in farms have to be provided with proper food shelter and care when this is done on a large scale it is called animal husbandry now see for getting food from animals we are rearing some type of animals like chicken like goat or there are so many type of animals we are rearing for getting food from that and that is known as animal husband rearing of animals for getting food from them is known as animal husband in this lesson we learn about what is mean by agriculture what is mean by animal husbandry what is mean by crop fertilizers manures what is mean by rabi and kharif crops what is mean by sowing and different steps which we are using in crop production